I've been a sonographer for over 20 years. Started in a small room. Basically, ultrasound was confined to a very small area, so I had like one stretcher and the machine, so I was not able to move equipment around very well, not able to move stretchers around. And I guess it was after about five years, I started to notice at night, after the end of the day, that I would have this tingling sensation in my shoulders and my muscles. And I didn't think too much of it. I thought maybe it was just, you know, a hard day. So I started with a small amount of pain, maybe at night I experienced I might wake up with it. Then I would say probably after eight years, nine years, I noticed that I would start going to work with pain. So I would start in the morning with pain before I would even scan. And then also I noticed, you know, my back starting to hurt and that was leaning into the patient because you either have to stand and scan or sit. We didn't have stretchers that moved up and down. So therefore I was standing a lot, moving my back a lot, turning, leaning into the patient a lot. And uh, same thing, I went to a physical therapist, she told me the exact same thing. You've got to change how you scan. While Carol's story is familiar, it's one which doesn't need to be repeated. Many of these injuries can be avoided through the use of ergonomically designed equipment combined with specific exercise protocols and suggested adjustments to your procedures. During the course of this video, we will review the sonography process to help you identify and avoid potential work-related injuries. Importantly, we will introduce you to new and improved scanning tables and equipment expressly designed for sonographer comfort and safety. All of these efforts are designed to help reduce sonographer pain, improve patient comfort, and ensure the highest quality scans. We hope you will incorporate these recommendations into your clinical setting. In evaluating the workstation, it is important to look at the specifications of the equipment utilized in the entire workstation. Additionally, the workstation equipment should be selected specific to the application intended. For instance, in choosing an exam table, consideration should be given as to what type of exams are to be performed. Cardiac applications require different features in exam table than general ultrasound. General imaging that includes endovaginal exams require exam table provisions unique to that modality. Generally speaking, the recommended specifications for exam tables are height adjustable from 22 to 44 inches, retractable stirrups and dropping footboard for endovaginal exams, retractable side rails that fold underneath the table rather than alongside, thus decreasing the distance between the sonographer and the patient, electric height control, easy to move with casters suitable to the flooring and an adequate braking system. This particular table, the Biodex Ultra Pro Ultrasound Table, features 5-inch casters for ease of movement, even with the patient on the table. The central locking casters require no need to lock each caster individually. It's height adjustable from 23 to 40 inches. The electronic controls allow push-button control of all table movement no pumping or cranking for Trendelenburg and height. Additionally, the table features an adjustable Fowler back. The drop-down leg section allows for easier access for endovaginal procedures. Retractable stirrups are easily accessible when needed and hidden away when not in use. The hourglass contour allows the sonographer to get closer to their patient. Retractable side rails retract underneath the table frame for unobstructed access to the patient. The Biodex Echo Pro also has bilateral dropout sections to allow better access to the patient's chest and on the other side of the bed for right-handed cardiac scanning. The dropout section allows the sonographer to come in closer to the patient, reducing the reach and abduction of the scanning arm. The section can also be brought up to support the patient while in the decubitus position.
The risk factors addressed by utilizing a well-designed ultrasound table are abduction of the upper extremities, extended reach, and twisting and bending of the trunk. The significance of addressing these risk factors has been demonstrated in studies documenting the time it takes to reach muscle fatigue for varying degrees of arm abduction. 60 minutes at 30 degrees abduction, 20 minutes at 60 degrees, 10 minutes at 90 degrees, and 5 minutes at 120 degrees abduction. Additionally, endurance time associated with reach has been determined to be directly affected by the distance from the body that the reach is sustained. 30 minutes for 30 centimeters reach, 20 minutes for 40 centimeters reach, and 7 minutes for 50 centimeters reach. Therefore, the proper exam table with appropriate height adjustment, positioning, and patient access can unequivocally affect the risk for injury related to reach and abduction of the upper extremity.